they, uh, they got us uh, a tour that just knocked my eyes out. As many of you know, I was a tool maker a long time ago. And uh, this stuff really puts everything into a, a, a totally new perspective for me as far as this type of technology. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, David B. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Yesterday, when I was talking about Chuck Cook's unprotected left turn, I played the wrong clip like an amateur. He actually uploaded a new video going into this turn in a bit more detail. As you can see, it's a six lane crossing ultimately. So making this left turn and the vehicles are traveling anywhere from, you know, 50 to 70 miles per hour. Additionally, there's this fence and some trees that block some of the visibility so the car really does have to creep out over this white line to see what's coming. This was actually the turn Elon was referring to when it comes to better performance expected in the next software update. And I do think it's really cool that Elon is so in tune with the community that he knows about Chuck and this testing and this specific turn. So just wanted to clarify that and this new full video will be linked below. Elon liked this tweet from Jordan at the limiting factor and it's just a good reminder that when it comes to these cells, it's all about trade-offs, okay? So everyone is hyper focused on the performance and the energy density as they should be. However, there's also other things to consider like safety and manufacturing speed and input costs and the list goes on and on. This right here is an important distinction when comparing the 4680s to the 2170s. With the 2170s, the entire cell can is dead weight, whereas with the 4680, it is much thicker, which reduces the energy density. However, it's also 100% useful as structure for the vehicle. Trade-offs. The Monroe team uploaded a new video of Sandy getting a tour of the Idra facility in Northern Italy. Now, most of it was beyond my pay grade. However, my biggest takeaways were this. Most OEMs, they said, are currently looking at using rear underbodies instead of the front underbody because with a front casting, you actually need to make sure that it does not protrude into the car in the event of a front end crash, which is just more difficult, whereas the rear underbody is basically easier to implement. Idra also said that OEMs would need to produce around 20,000 to 50,000 parts per year for this type of investment in this machinery to make sense. Now, Idra did not specifically mention Tesla. However, when talking about that 9,000 ton machine, they were talking about the injection phase time or otherwise called the fill time. They said that for the 6,000 ton machine, it was 120 milliseconds. And they're guessing that for the 9,000 ton machine, it would be around 180 to 200 milliseconds. But the interesting thing is we're assuming Tesla, they just said the customer actually asked them to get this time down to make it faster. So once again, Tesla pushing them to continually innovate. And one of the last parts that was in English for me is these machines are shipped in sub components and they ship directly to the point of assembly where then the Idra team will go and actually do the final assembly and the first testing with the customer and they're trying to do this entire process in 12 months. They did say right now at this factory, there's enough factory room floor to make about three of these machines at a time. However, in the near future, they are planning to expand that to having a capacity for six. And this definitely seems to be the future of auto manufacturing and no surprise, but Tesla is leading the way, continually pushing the envelope. We get an update on Tesla's virtual power plant operation in California. We know last year customers can join, but they weren't compensated and then finally last month, owners were allowed to receive compensation. As of June 22nd, Tesla had invited around 25,000 PG&E customers to join this VPP program. More than 3,000 have expressed interest in enrolling with more than 1,500 customers officially in the program. Doing some simple math, if you have 1,500 owners in the program, let's assume the average owner has 1.5 Powerwalls each Powerwall has a storage capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours. So doing that math, that would be around 30 megawatt hours of capacity in this VPP at the moment. Now, of course, that wouldn't all be deployed and available at the same time, but I just wanted to show you the capacity. And then for context, the theoretical capacity of the VPP right now is 30 megawatt hours. And right now the average electricity customer in California is using around 8,988 kilowatt hours or 8.9 megawatt hours over the course of the year. Despite all of the challenges that Giga Shanghai went through in quarter two of this year, during the first half of 2022 compared to the first half of last year, Giga Shanghai's exports are still up over 130%. 
Giga Shanghai exported 97,100 vehicles in the first half of this year compared to 41,700 in the same time last year. That data of course includes the first month of Q2 this year where Tesla exported zero vehicles due to factory shutdowns when historically the first month of the quarter is the strongest export month for Giga Shanghai. I really like this chart from Alex on Twitter showing the quarter two global BEV sales by brand. Per brand, the bar on the furthest left goes back to quarter one of last year, and the furthest bar on the right is the most recent quarter two of this year. Just wanted to show you, Tesla's still in a commanding lead. Cox Automotive shared a good article with some interesting EV and sales data. So pure EVs from quarter two this year over quarter two last year, up 66%. Per the usual though, the context is why this is so interesting. Hybrids down 10%, fuel cell down 25%, totally electrified, including all of those up 13%, but the total auto market is down 20%. So the overall auto market is in decline. However, the percent of electrified is on the increase and it's being led by full BEVs, which is what we want to see. In quarter two, Tesla was the top selling luxury brand in the United States, outpacing all of the established names, not just in the EV market, but the overall luxury market. Sales of all types of electrified vehicles made up 12.6% of the US market in quarter two. In quarter two of last year, there were 19 EV models available for sale in the United States. Fast forward one year to this year, that number has jumped to 33. In the first half of 2022, roughly 55% of all hybrids sold in the United States were sold by Toyota and Lexus dealers. And lastly, according to KBB, the average price for a new EV in June was more than $66,000. Speaking of high prices, there is still hope. Somebody asked about any plans for Tesla to lower prices of cars. Elon said, if inflation calms down, we can lower the prices for cars. Now, just because they can, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will, but I really do hope that they do. <laughs> Tesla Herbert held a spaces on Twitter and apparently Robert Scoble said that his inside contact told him Tesla is already using Dojo. Going back, Elon has said Dojo isn't needed but it will make self-driving better. Dojo uses our own chips and a computer architecture optimized for neural net training, not a GPU cluster. Could be wrong, but I think it will be the best in the world. And in November 2020, Elon said Dojo won't contribute for about a year. It's mostly a generalized neural net training computer. Benchmark we're tracking is frames per second. Must beat next generation GPU TPU clusters or it's pointless. I believe the last time Elon talked about this, Tesla was not yet using Dojo for neural net training. However, he did say this is more important than it may seem at first, referring to the Dojo white paper. So hopefully on this upcoming call, we can get some more information. With the new update, you can now break out your supercharging statistics in the app between home and work. So you can actually go in and set up custom rates for work. And then when you charge at work, it'll track that data separately. I was able to find one more screenshot from Brandon that will actually show you the work broken out that actually has some data. VW's Cariad software division is still struggling and is well behind schedule. And now it's looking like it's going to cause delays for some of the brands under the VW umbrella. Audi's flagship vehicle under the Artemis name will now not launch until 2027, a three year delay. Bentley's plans to be fully EV by 2030 are looking doubtful. Porsche's new Macan and Audi's Q6 are threatened with delays as well. Both were supposed to launch next year. According to some Chinese media outlets, Giga Shanghai is indeed still actively hiring, mostly for production sales and after sales service positions. Now take this for what you will, just an anecdote from the comment section of a Reddit thread. However, we know there are plenty of fears in Shanghai of more lockdowns as there's more COVID testing going on. This user on Reddit said, I just got locked down in Shanghai for seven days, says I'm in a compound with 2000 residents and one positive case closed down my whole compound for seven days. This is happening all over Shanghai. If it was happening all over, there would probably be more reports in the mainstream media about it, but just putting it out there to keep an eye on. Hyundai is set to produce a performance Ionic 5 called the N version that's expected to go into production next year. As of now, there are no specs available for this vehicle. At a recent test drive event for Lucid, somebody took a picture of this screen showing Apple CarPlay working in the Lucid vehicle. 
Right now, it's just the custom Lucid user interface. However, Lucid has said that both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will eventually be available, no timelines given. Along those same lines, it looks like Rivian will be following in the footsteps of Tesla. In an email to a customer, a Rivian employee said, we believe to create a truly incredible digital experience, an integrated platform that's optimized for our vehicles is the better path. We do not currently support Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. In case you see this headline, it's not referring to the state of Georgia in the United States, it's referring to the Eastern European country. Polestar released the pricing for the upcoming luxury SUV, the Polestar 3. Looks like it'll start at 75,000 euros and go all the way up to 110,000. Now the conversion rate right now is pretty close to one for one, so it should be similar prices here in the States as well. This vehicle will indeed be manufactured stateside at Volvo's new facility in Charleston, South Carolina. Polestar's CEO, Thomas Ingenloth, also said this, we would love to find a way to add a roadster to our business plan. Don't forget, Polestar had the O2 concept car that you're now looking at, which, in my opinion, is an awesome looking car. To send you off on the weekend, we have Sawyer out here counting cars in this picture, counting 7,000, which could be a record, Model 3 and Ys at Shanghai's port to be loaded for export onto a cargo ship. So we're officially back to business at Giga Shanghai. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.